entrepreneurs on Born the Brew. You are now listening to the Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's grow! Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Adam McChesney, and I want to thank you for being here today. We are live from Half Coast Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you to Half Coast for this amazing setup and for sponsoring the show. And if you're looking to start your podcast or take your current one to the next level, then you definitely need to come check out what they have going on. Contact them today for a free consultation. If you're listening, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. We would love for you to share this on social media by tagging me and our guests so that way we can get this content out to more people. Today, we have another great episode lined up for you today. I'm excited about this one. It's an in-person interview, and he's local here in St. Louis. He and I originally connected through our Apex community a couple years ago and have built a relationship over the past two years. He's someone that's got a big heart, always looking for ways to grow, but also give back and help others grow themselves. My guest today is Brandon Green. He is the owner at the Car Audio Shop. They are St. Louis's local award-winning car audio and electronics installation specialist with two locations in High Ridge and Maryland Heights. He's also the podcast host of Businesses, or sorry, Business, Cars, and Cigars. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of being a guest on a show a few weeks back. So, Brandon, welcome to the show. Ah, thanks for having me. I didn't realize like how much of a tongue twister the business cars and cigars <laughs> might have been, but yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. For yeah, sure. yeah, but no, you have a, a great podcast as well. Um, as I mentioned, was it on your uh, podcast a couple weeks ago? Yeah, you we got had a, a lot nice of fun, set, n- a nice setup there as well. And and I actually did smoke one of the cigars that oh, you gave awesome. me. It was a great cigar, <laughs> so I appreciate that, man. Well, but, there's more where that came from. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> glad to hear, man. Well, I'm really excited to have you today. I know you're going to be able to provide a lot of value to our audience. I know you and I have known each other for a little bit over two years now, Um, but for our guests, we like to bring them in and, you know, kind of outline their entrepreneurial journey, talk about where they came from, where they're at today, and and talk about how that compares to beer and the entrepreneurs. So we have an outline that we go through. We like to start with the history. So obviously every beer has a reason behind why it's getting brewed. So if you can tell us a little bit about who you are where you come from and what you do, starting with kind of where you're at right now and then work us backwards. That would be great. Sure. Um, like you had mentioned, I own a couple of car stereo shops here in St. Louis. We've been, uh, been open here. Let's see, going on almost 11 years now. So, um, it's been, a. A little bit of a journey, lots of fun. I think uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We're <laughs> seeing, yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, it's basically what I've done for 25 years. I've worked in quite a few different shops, seen a lot of the ways to do things and a lot of ways how not to do things. <laughs> so, um, kind of took all that. And you know, everybody always told me, you know, if you think you can do it better, then go do it. And I said, okay, I will. Yeah. <laughs> so, Take that's that's what I did. That's awesome. And so, you mentioned, you know, kind of seeing how other people did stuff and probably yeah. taking what you saw and you're like, man, I would do that differently. And then you went out and did it. I think that's something that entrepreneurs are always kind of looking at. You go back to somewhere where you worked and you're like, I really liked how they did this, but if they just did this better, what was that process like? And then creating your own thing from that? Um, well, there's kind of two parts to that, honestly. Um, definitely, you know, seeing what other people did and, uh, just uh, refining some of the good things and eliminating the bad things. But also the other part of that is seeing what they did and why. And now that I'm, you know, a business owner as opposed to an employee, you know, getting to see that, oh, shit, that was was done on purpose and now I know why. And, you know, so uh, realize there's a couple things there that – I should have done a little bit better as an employee and know the reasoning behind it now. So. Yeah. No, I think that's important because I think we, again, we kind of always look at something and we're like, oh, we could go do it better. And then we go do it ourselves. And sometimes we're so stubborn that we have to learn our own from oh, our own yeah, mistakes. Absolutely. But, uh, but that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the car audio shop and kind of what you guys offer and, in, in, you know, some of your types of clients and, and all that good stuff for the audience. Sure. Um, I mean, it's basically car stereo, 12 electronics. We do about anything goes along with um, the electrical side of the car. Um, do everything from lighting, security, remote start systems. Um, of course, the audio side, do a lot of high-end um, audio builds, um, custom fabrication, just a, a little bit of everything, you know, all the fun stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know. I saw your shop and you guys have 
Is it, I, I originally, I think you had only been in there like maybe a week or two when I first saw it almost yeah. two years ago. And I saw it again a couple of weeks ago, almost two years later. And, and you guys have done an amazing job in building that out. Yeah, it's totally changed. And I'll be honest with you, we, we opened the, the North Shop, um, it would have been January of 21. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, something like that. No, January of 20. So it's been open almost two years. Um, but, uh, Honestly, wasn't sure how that was going to go. You know, it was kind of a leap of faith. The space came available. It's like, well, you know, it, no people all around that area that do different things with, you know, everything from a uh, detail company to, yeah. uh, you know, people, mechanic side of stuff. And just I'm like, well, they're all used – our high-end clients are used to being in this area. They're a lot more comfortable in this area. Yep. So, um, and honestly, since day one, it's been busy. We still got – some displays that we haven't had time to build. We got, you know, <laughs> other things that want to get finished and get done, but we've been rolling and just going with it. And, um, you know, that stuff will get done eventually, but taking care of the clients is the big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. You still have more to build out. You have the business coming in. So all that good stuff, but, but awesome, man. Yeah. It's been amazing to watch the journey. Amazing to go see, see it now in full action versus kind of yeah, the, the infancy <laughs> process of it is always cool to see. Yeah. That first time you were there, I think we were, we probably I ain't sure if we had the flooring down yet or mm. <laughs> some of the walls may have still been getting torn out. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a journey for sure. But it's uh it's been a good one. Yeah, love it, man. Well, cool. Well, let's dive into more of the entrepreneurial side and just kind of get started here with the ingredients. So obviously sure. great beers are made from great ingredients. In your entrepreneurial process, what are three things that you can pinpoint that have made you successful thus far? Um one of the biggest ones, I, I actually made myself a list, everybody, so I hey, didn't forget some of this stuff. that's all good. Um, just refusing to quit, I think, is one of the biggest things. Um, look, I know there's a, a lot of things I still don't know, still <laughs> learning. Um, but, you know, you got to figure it out on the way. And I just, I decided, you know, no plan B. Got to make it work somehow. Um, another thing is just keep keep learning. You know, that those two kind of go together, but, you, you know, you just got to keep pushing yourself and trying to, uh, improve. Um, had a lot of great support. I think that's key to, uh, any successful business. You know, my wife's been very supportive, friends, family, all that, having that support system there for all the times that goes up and down is, uh, is key. And, and kind of last thing, um, you know, having core values and a mission and knowing exactly, I know you preach this on here Mm -hmm. and I do too. And all the people we know do, um, but I've learned that a lot more over the past couple of years, you know, with between Apex and, you know, um, all the people I've met through there. Um, and, yeah, it's making sure you get that foundation down and get going, which I didn't have for a lot of years because I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, so having that all set in place now and then getting everybody to buy into that, you know, the, the whole team and really build off that has uh, been key. That's awesome. Yeah, I know we, I've been talking a lot about core values recently because I just myself reworked them in January of this year. Mm -hmm. And I look at the trajectory of our business. It's not just that we like, we've grown so much, but it's also the way that we've done it. Yep. Previously, when all of our growth happened, it was so much reliant on me Yeah. and bringing on potentially wrong clients or wrong employees and things like that. And now it's something that's scalable with processes and systems but it's on the backing of our core values and everything that we do. So I love that you talked about that because it is such a integral part of creating what is a business. I think a lot of people get into business and they think, Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I started this company. I now have a business. Most of us. And for me, it was as well. I'm sure you probably had times as well. We just created another job for ourselves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we <laughs> gave ourselves the job title of owner. Right. Yep. And so I think that, you know, goes hand in hand with how you talked about the support, you know, the support is literally everything because sometimes we're on an Island and we're on an Island for a while. We need to know that we have that support, but then never giving up in consistently learning, I think are key aspects that every entrepreneur that wants to be successful has to have because you're never going to have all the information at your fingertips and things are always going to change. Oh yes, and, absolutely. And if you're not willing to adapt with that or you're willing to quit, you're going to sa- you be sa- you're going to sacrifice the success of your company. Yeah. I mean I keep hearing 
I've heard this for years, but you know, you're, you didn't come this far to only go this far, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I know we've heard one. that a lot, but, um, that one. You, you know, it's the truth. You gotta, you just gotta keep pushing, keep learning. Um, and, and go on from there. I love what you said right there about changing up your core values, going back and reworking them. Um, everybody needs to keep in mind that, you know, that's totally fluid and can change over time. It's going to, I think your definite values are not going to necessarily change, but how you want them incorporated in the business is going to definitely change over time and may want to add to it, may want to change something, tweak something, whatever. And so yep. it's, it's always something you got to keep Keep working on. Keep a pulse on for sure. There was one thing that that I want to kind of dig deeper on. You talk about the core values. And so for me, I only had one employee, mm-hmm. actually two employees at the time when we actually went back. I had core I had core values. I used the quotation marks, but yeah. they never really talked about. So they really didn't know what they were. Then we implemented them and they were both like through and through on board with it. They they represented, they helped me build the core values, right? Right. For you, it sounds like you may have really taken that initiative to implement them, create them, et cetera, and then utilize it with current employees. Yes. If that sounds about right. I've heard, and I, I haven't personally dealt with it, but when you, when you change the trajectory of core values or you implement them for the first time, was there any sort of pushback? Did you start to find people weren't resonating with them? Like, what was that process? Like? Um, there's been, I wouldn't say a whole lot of pushback. Uh, we started out with four. We, we adjusted that and now it's five. Um, past six months or a year or something like that. Um, just kind of added another one to it, um, yep. which one of my guys came up with, and quite frankly, it worked good for us. Um, but, yeah, it was getting them to buy in, an employee to buy in to, you know, your vision and your values and everything like that is uh, – it can be it can be stressful if – as long as you've hired the right people, you know, and according to your core values and all yeah. that. But if you're already – people already in place and then yeah. trying to implement that it, it does come with a little bit different of a struggle for sure. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. That's kind of what I would anticipate, right? Like yeah. it's no different than adding a new process that someone hasn't been doing before and they have to do it now to check the boxes, to be able to help scale the company. They're looking at it potentially right off the bat as like, this is just another thing I have to do. Oh yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. We're dealing with that right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, I had Thomas up here last week. Yeah, he yeah, spent yeah. a couple of days going through the business and uh, helped me really dial in some stuff. And we set up a CRM and everything. And oh, yeah. the guy, it's getting uh, getting finished up now, but I told the guys about it. You're talking about pushback and they're, they're thinking that exact same thing. Like, oh, I, I go, no, at the end of it, this is actually going to work better. As long as you do this front end work, this yeah. will automate a whole lot of other stuff so you don't have to do it. Yeah. But I, getting I, them I to agree. realize that is... And I, and, I, and I like what you talked about and how you explained that, right, is, yes, on the front end, this is a new procedure. But on the back end, it's going to save you from all those extra things that likely you've been complaining about. And so I think it kind of goes back to the core values and missions is selling why you're doing everything and relating it back to the core values. So that way they're yes. bought in. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I had I totally lost that one. <laughs> I had something yeah. and it just, whew, it's gone. Hey, if it, if it comes back, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> So the next thing that we'll get into here is just the overall brewing process in general. So obviously great beer doesn't happen overnight. Entrepreneurship is the same way. Oh, so yeah. talk to us about some of the ups and downs of your journey, some things, some moments that really stick <sighs> out for you. Oh, I think one of the biggest ones has been the learning curve. Um, let's face it. I soldered wires for a living. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I built things and started wire. I didn't know first damn thing about business. Mm-hmm. Um, still can't say I didn't know a whole lot, but, uh, <laughs> uh you know, I'm learning all of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that learning curve and figuring out, um, all the things I screwed up and also realizing that I screwed it up and being humble enough to say, yeah, fuck this up. And so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta fix it, you know? And, and that's what we've been working on a whole lot the past couple of years is realizing some of the things that were screwed up and, and what we need to do. And that's made all the ups and downs have definitely come from lack of knowledge. I, I would say, um, you know, ups and downs. Wow. Um, hiring, firing people, you know, having to do, with what we do and the types of cars we deal with, you know, I'm, I'm very particular about who I bring on, mm-hmm. which we need to anyway. Yeah. But especially, you know, you're dealing with somebody's quarter million, half million dollar car. You know, you can't just Pretty throw, <laughs> throw some kid that just wants to put in a car stereo. Yeah. Can't throw somebody like that. I mean, it's got to be somebody that knows what they're doing. And mm-hmm. so it's that that's made it very hard um, as far as the, the whole hiring pool, so to speak, yeah. you know, getting somebody that can do that. Um 
learning uh, learning to work um if crystal listens to this she's gonna be mad but <laughs> honestly uh, we've had a lot of uh um fights back and forth just figuring out how to do stuff crystal's my wife by mm-hmm. way everybody um but it's it, it's been us both learning and what we need to do and uh she still has another job and whatever but she does all her bookkeeping payroll all that type of stuff because she's been banking for i don't know longer than i've been doing this <laughs> so um there's definitely been you know some um abrasive uh times with that um that's probably been the biggest things is just dealing with, you know, dealing with people and getting, getting used to it. I was never a salesman, Mm -hmm. you know, so I opened, it was just me and learn how to talk to people. And, you know, I I can sit here and tell you all sorts of technical crap about this. (laughs) Guess what? Nobody cares. You know, they just want their stereo to sound good or their car to remote start. They don't give a shit what what all it takes. And, you know, explaining all that, learning what I need to do with some of that was definitely a a challenge as well. Yeah. And I think it's something where like I, for me, I was in medical device sales and I thought, Okay, I know how to do all the technical side of building mm-hmm. websites and ranking them and doing all that. I went back and I was like, okay, I want to be behind a computer because I just ran rampant for the last five years selling. And then I realized I actually really like selling. I'm good at the other stuff, but I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I have to teach someone else to do it so that way I can get out of being in the minutia of the business. And that's <laughs> that's also a struggle too, I think, when you're really good at it and you're trying to – you know, I was talking with someone the other day and I was like, you know, I always thought that when I would hire someone else on the stuff that I was really good at, I thought that they needed to be at my level and beyond. And we have our own process Yep. and we all like, we're going to do what we're going to do in our own way. And no one's ever going to do it the exact same as good as we're going to do. <laughs> those, those are literally on my list. Letting go. Um, yeah. Um, letting other people do the job you hired them to do and yeah. Let's face it, uh, moving on to the next thing. I mean, I don't want to run with this, oh, but you were good. talking about, you know, nobody's, look, nobody's ever going to do it the same. Nobody's going to love this business the same way the owner is. Yeah. You know, they're not going to do it the same. They're not going to have the same passion behind it. Um, not necessarily that it's just a job for them. Some people it is, you know, but um, you're not going to have, you know, somebody's going to do it as, as well as you. Mm-hmm. Or if they can, maybe they can do it better than you, certain things. Yeah. Um, but learning to, to let go of some of that and letting them do their job. Even 70, they can do it 70, 80% to what you can do. Let them roll with it. Absolutely. No, I love that. So the next thing we'll talk about is the fermentation and conditioning within the part of the beer brewing process. So seeing what the final result of an initial beer brew looks like and what it tastes like, figuring out what needs to be changed in order to make it just a little bit better. So what is the biggest lesson that you've learned thus far that you would share with an entrepreneur looking to save them years worth of mistakes. Well, I actually got a twofer for you on this let's, one. Let's go. Uh, let's and go. we just talked about the first one. Mm. You know, no one's no one's uh, ever going to be you. Yep. You know, um, you got to learn. And this has been a really hard one for me is learning to let them do it. Sometimes you got to force them to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like, hey, this is your job. Don't always jump in and save them. You know, yeah. let give them space to fail. Let, let them, them fail, fail. Let them figure it out. And eventually they'll get it, you know, or, or if they don't, then maybe it's time for them to move on and do something that's better for them. But, um, that, and, you know, you can only leave people as far as you, as far as you've gone, yeah. you know, I cannot teach people things I don't know, you mm-hmm. know, so it's always on me or as a business owner, it's always on you, you know, to always be improving and, you know, making yourself better so that you can lead the people that are following you yeah. further. Absolutely. I love both of those things. I think, I think failure just in general is something that entrepreneurs aren't when they go into entrepreneurship, like I wasn't ready to fail. Like I thought like, Hey, I'm going to run this my way and I'm going to make sure everything is perfect. Right. And then failures start to happen and you realize it's just a part of the game. That's where also growth comes in. That's where other opportunities to get better come in. But it also goes back to your employees is you have to let them fail and learn from their mistakes in order for them to reach that new level, which kind of coincides with what your next point was. Absolutely. Yeah. Always being a step ahead. I actually went through this transition this year where for years I was operating way ahead of where my business was at. Like I, I've been doing all the stuff I've been doing now, adding additional things, but mm-hmm. doing it for two years. 
I hired two A players over the last year, my integrator and then also my director of client success, and they're raising the bar. But I was kind of over here, and now I'm having to re-go raise the <laughs> now bar. Now you got to push you yourself I mean? a little bit yeah. more, which is so good. It's like, so it's always good, but you think that, you know, hey, you have to have everything perfect. Your employees have to be perfect. Like, yes, you want A players, but they are also going to have to fail no different than you failed, you know, throughout the entire process. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, love it. So the last thing that we'll talk about here, Brandon, is the distribution. So beer's ready to go. We're going to start marketing it, selling it, drinking it. Um, so for you, whether it's, you know, with what stuff you have going on in entrepreneurship, with podcasts, all that stuff, or in the business, what's next for you? What do the next couple of years look like? The next couple of years are going to be fine-tuning all this stuff I spent two years learning, put implementing it putting it in place, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff, because um, I've spent a whole lot of time, you know, almost too much, so to speak, learning a lot of stuff and haven't put in some of the time implementing it. Sure. That taking action thing. Yeah. You know? it's and piece. so, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's keys there. So um, that's the biggest thing for me right now is to uh, get all this stuff implemented, make sure the right asses are in the right seats, yeah. you know, at the shop and doing everything's getting done. And, um, just kind of keep improving myself and see how far we can take this. Love it, man. Well, I'm really excited for you. I know you got a lot of stuff going on and excited to see the podcast grow, see the business grow, things like that. Tell people where they can find more information about you online. We'll put this all in the show notes where they can find more about you, where they can also find about the business. Cause I know we got a lot of people here in St. Louis listening. So I'm sure, sure. they'd love to find out more. Sure. Um, Instagram, uh, is the car audio shop, STL, um, Facebook, the car audio shop, um, Got uh, pages there for both of them. Um, you'll find me on there, uh, Brandon Green, just like it sounds, just like spelled just like the color. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think I do some TikToks. I haven't been very good at doing the video <laughs> stuff. That's on my that's on have to do list. Yeah, love it, man. Love it, man. Well, cool. Well, we'll put all that in the show notes, Brandon. I really appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you to the audience. I want to thank you for listening to today's podcast, tuning in, and please be sure to subscribe, download, and leave a five-star review. It goes an incredibly long way. And thank you all to, uh, thank you again to Half Coast Studios. If you're here in St. Louis and looking to start your current podcast or take your, your current podcast to the next level, then you need to check out what they have going on. We'll see you all next week. And remember, entrepreneurs aren't, entrepreneurs aren't born, they are brewed. I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, so I'm born to prove. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's